Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first Stampede Racing Royale podcast. Everybody, cheers. Cheers. Yay. 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 <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching along. This is, as I said, this is our very first podcast for Stampede Racing Royale, and I've gathered a rogues gallery of, of experts from our team to chat to about all things our game, which we're super excited to be working on. Find out a bit more about everybody here, find out a bit more about our team, find out a bit more about the game and what we're doing with it. But um, yeah, this is exciting. We're at, uh, so we're at One Mill Street, which is a venue uh, which is nearby actually our development office, which is in Leamington Spa in the UK. And it was just in a, yeah, a super cool podcast studio, just um, gonna have a chat about our game. Um, but yeah, I thought, as you can probably tell, because I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous, I'm, I'm more than happy to say that, because you know, it's the first time we're doing something like this. So, you know, that's absolutely fine. But a good way to break the nerves is to do a bit of an icebreaker. So what I've asked our team um, is to introduce themselves in a moment, but also at the end of the intro, say something that nobody else in here in this room, say something about them that nobody else in this room will know. So, <laughs> I'm 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 hoping that this will be <laughs> hoping this will be a interesting and b safe for a YouTube audience. Yes. <laughs> Not making anybody in particular. You should be, we've done our homework on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll will kick off because I've I I laid down the gauntlet, so I should probably lead by example. Um, I'm Chris. I'm a senior community manager um, uh, for Stampy Race and Real. You may have been unfortunate enough to see me on things like TikToks and stuff like that. Um, I handle everything across our social channels and uh, community channels. Uh, yeah, so that's me. So you, so um, yeah, awesome to be here. A uh, thing that nobody will know about me um, in this room is that, you know, it's very natural. You wouldn't know this about me because you know we work primarily remotely, so you may not have noticed. But I've got this big scar on my hand. Um, when I was about eight to ten years old, uh, my sister thought it would be a really good idea to um, go rollerblading, but we only had one pair of rollerblades between us. And she was like, oh, it would be a really good idea if we have one each. <laughs> <laughs> we have one rollerblade each. So, and I was yeah. like, I was far too young to really know that that was a terrible idea. And she uh, she set me off down this fairly, fairly slopey slope. Uh, on one roller blade and I couldn't control myself as I got to the bottom and I just went I just basically went like hands forward onto the ground and there was some broken glass on the floor aye, aye, and I had this aye. big old cut down down my hand but yeah when everybody's like oh that's a really cool scar how did you get that and I'm like oh using one roller blade <laughs> <laughs> it was it an A&E job it was unfortunately yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and I was um uh, not 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 afraid to say I cried quite a bit. So. You've been rollerblading since. <laughs> no, <laughs> you would not be surprised to hear that I've avoided it at all costs. <laughs> next, right. next team activity. Yeah, oh yeah, bit of, team, bit of sumo Lamington team bonding at rollerblading. Yeah, right. Okay, we we'll go around the table. I guess over to you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I I'm Peter Barnard. I'm art director in sumo Lamington. So, doing art and games for sort of quite a long time. Um, I guess the thing that you wouldn't know about me, so being an art student, um, I got all creative when we had an art party on my degree course and um, I went to a charity shop and bought a woman's fake fur coat, cut it up, started to make a barbarian's hand when it had big horns on it and then I didn't have proper face paint so I just used black and white acrylic paint, stuck some of the fur on for big eyebrows and sideboards <laughs> and was mistaken for a badger. And not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just went with it. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm definitely a badger. Yeah, and a good one at that. <laughs> I like that. I'm not surprised that it's very arty, but I, li I like that. <laughs> well, not very arty because they mistook you for a badger. Yeah, <laughs> it was an attempt. An attempt was made. Yeah. <laughs> oh, over so, to yourself. So me, yeah, it's another Chris. Um, my name's Chris Southall. I'm the studio director at Sumo Levington. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit, you know, later how the studio started and stuff. I've been at Sumo now for what four years, and my, my job is just to take care of everything, make sure the studio's running well. Um, in terms of things that nobody would know about me, I actually didn't do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Come back to me later. Okay, okay. right. Yeah. Yeah. Lucia. Yeah. Adding to the suspense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Lucia Figoli. I'm an artist and I do concepts in uh, Sumo Lamington. Um, something that nobody knows about me. But it's not really at the same level as the badger slash the costume <laughs> thing. But uh, I uh, I really love to watch a docu series about 
um, serial killers, um, crimes, and <laughs> cults in general, <laughs> everything bad in the world. So <laughs> I'm a big fan. Paul, are you comfortable still yeah, saying well, that? I always agree when, when people are really into like CSI, you know, yeah. about forensic cover ups, they yeah. like really do research. <laughs> yeah. How can I get away with You should it? watch this episode, it did a really good job of covering up. It's great. <laughs> I never know that about you, Lucia, because that is just the opposite. <laughs> I Maybe did my that's homework. The balance. That's the balance. The balance is that. I've got a good one actually. Now that's that's, that's spurred me on. Yeah. Um, something probably none of you know about me. Yeah. Um, at some point, what two or three years ago, I was ill. I was off work for a bit. I became addicted to Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Stampede Anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of our ex colleagues now, H, when she heard that, she just could not believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's known me for what, 15, 20 years, and she's like, What, you watch Love Island? Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. You must have been really ill. No matter what happens after this podcast, I feel like this was worth it yeah. to find yeah. out that piece of information. Absolutely wonderful. And um, uh, yourself? As myself, yeah. myself. Uh, 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 hello, Chris. <laughs> hello. I'm Paul Hollywood. Uh, no, I am not the bread baker. Right? <laughs> yes. Now, let's get this straight. You yeah. know, always confused. No, I don't know. I don't even know how bread works. <laughs> um, so, I am the development director uh, at Sumo Levinson. Uh, I've been in the games industry at Lights of Wordness like a big batch, 33 years. So, I'm a man and boy. And before, uh, something you, you might have known before. Um, <clears throat> Before I started in the games industry at the young age of 17, uh, I used to uh, be a track athlete and I was ranked 10th in the country. So um, wow. at that time it wasn't really a career because there was no like, sponsorship, so, but I could have gone down a very different path in my life. Whereas it, I actually chose with video games and DJing in a legal great pub. <laughs> <laughs> I think the two more yeah. fun options there. Yeah. I, would well, say. Yes. <laughs> I knew you were very keen running, obviously keeping yourself in shape. Like ten, tenth in the what country. distance? 400 meter hurdles. For, oh, 400 meter hurdles. Before yeah. that, I used to be a decathlete. Right. Um, yeah. But I, my coach took me aside one day when I was about 16 and said, You're not going to be big enough. Yeah, because <clears throat> you have to throw stuff as well as running and jumping, which right. I was pretty good at. Yeah. So then he said, "Hey, why don't you try this uh, this event?" And I, I was very good at it. Ah, fantastic! And we, maybe that's I think that's a better option for a summer party event. Hurdles. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, that was good. I, I enjoyed that. I was definitely worth it. <laughs> um, so obviously we're here to talk about Stampede Racing Royale, which is the awesome game that we're all working on, but. I kind of want to take a bit of time before we do that to talk about our team, our studio, and the people that are making this game. Because I think it's, you know, I guess I'm biased to working as a community manager. I think it's really important to, for people who are playing games to kind of understand the team behind the thing that they're enjoying. So, and really get a sense of like the effort and the talent that goes into that. So that's kind of one of the key purposes of what this podcast will be all about, as well as kind of delivering a bit of kind of insight into like the decisions that we make for the game and how we're involving our our players going forward. But yeah, I really want to kind of put a focus on our team and our studio. Probably best to start with you, Chris. Uh, yeah, Possibly. so like, yeah, the first question really is like, core values of our team. Like, you know, you, you're, you're the person who kind of really leads this from the front. So, you know, if you were to pick out some core values of Sumo Lamington, like what would they be? Yeah, I mean, we talked about this early on when we were starting the studio, <clears throat> you know, when there's three or four of us in a room and, you know, what did we want to do with the studio? Um, we kind of started with with a vision more than more than values, and the values come under the vision. Um, you know, I, I think we all in this room know what our vision is. Our vision is stated as we make you look forward to tomorrow, <clears throat> and you know I talk about that a lot. The idea there is the kind of uh, experiences we're making, the games we're making. You know, our our players are coming back, you know, day after day, and they're seeing different things in the game and looking forward to what they're gonna find and see a changing game as we go forward. Um, but it's also about the team as yeah. well. You know, we, we want to be here working together as colleagues, looking forward to tomorrow and enjoying our work. So I think that's really important. Um, yeah. In terms of values, I'll have to crib slightly, but you know, we spent a lot of time thinking about this. And I think um, my experience to this day is everyone really does live by these values. And um, you know, we've got such a nice team culture and we'll probably go into it a little bit more later, but you know, you've got great engagement. Everyone's having a lot of fun working on this game. Um, we're enjoying playing it as well as making it, which is always a good sign. Um, but you know, we start with trust and respect. And that, that's important. You know, anybody who's working within the studio 
for me, it's important if they have um, agency, um, by which I mean, you know, that they're kind of given responsibility for what they're doing and trusted. So trust and respect is a very important thing. Um, improvement is another value. And, you know, I talk about mastery. If somebody has mastery and have, has agency, you know, the, those are two of the three things that I think are really important to people just being happy on this earth. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think if we're doing, if we're seeing that, then that's going to be a, a good thing for the studio. Um, support, supporting each other is another very important aspect. Um, we don't want to be islands. You know, this is a collaborative thing that we do and we want to be supporting each other in that. Um, sharing. Um, is part of that as well and um, it all comes down to you know our enjoyment in what we're doing I think shines through in in what we're doing with the with the games we're making so yeah. that's kind of where where I would start with our values really. yeah I could go on I, I, I won't go on for hours don't worry <laughs> anybody want to kind of add to that or yeah I, I think I'll answer your about it. Um, so when, when Chris brought me into the studio 18 months ago before that I, I worked at three other studios each studio for roughly about a decade and I was a co-founder of each of those studios. Simon Levinson is by far the best studio I've ever worked at. Uh, so I was doing something wrong. <laughs> in, in my previous, as, as a founder of other studios, but to go with the, uh, the values, but also the ethos, the energy, the passion, the creativity of everybody in the studio is a very special place to work in. Yeah, and, and I think it's interesting because uh, the studio largely formed through the, uh, the pandemic. You know, mm. we had 16 of us before the pandemic kicked in and... We're a lot bigger than that now, you know, won't, won't name exact numbers, but we're, we're closing on 100 people. and 30, um, something like that? Uh, depending on how you look at it. Okay. Because, you know, our sister studios and who's working yeah. with us. Mm. We, technically speaking, I think we're around 100, but there's, you know, more of us working mm. in general on the projects that we're working on. Um, but yeah, you know, we've got quite a diverse team and people coming from all over the globe. Um, and it's a real mix of people. And I think the thing that underpins it is, you know, sticking to those values. I think mm. that's really important. But yeah. you know, I think the thing that I like is it's, it's such a kind of diverse spread of people. You've got ancient people like Paul. Who's <laughs> kind of, well, <laughs> I can only say that because I'm, I'm basically as ancient as him. <laughs> you know, we've, we've, we've got a, di you know, a, a good mix of ages and experience yeah. and diverse diversity in the team. And I think it's, you know, it was always really important for us to, to, to achieve that. And... Um, it's just a testament to how, how cohesive the team is that um, you know, coming together through lockdown and working remotely, um, we're, we're still able to you know um, work together very effectively. It's good. Yeah. No, also, uh, about that, uh, so I'm from Italy, right? Yeah. So um, when I came here in the UK, when I found the job uh, at Sumo Leamington, uh, obviously as many immigrants <laughs> probably have the feeling of, oh, you know, uh, I'm going in a in a, a different country, so I'm worried if uh, the team will be, you know, welcoming me, or you know, just uh, worried about the people that I I was about to to meet as yeah. a team. But honestly, when I when I came here, uh, that worry those worries just went away because all the people that I met were really nice to me, and uh, they weren't judgmental, they were actually very curious about my background. Mm. So uh, it was just really nice. And uh, it's also thanks thank for, thanks to the, the values, yeah. I think, that you built up with uh, all the other team members yeah. before I arrived at Sumo Leamington. Definitely. Yeah. I think uh, this is the first like spoiler, the first big secret to kind of give away during this podcast series, but making games is really tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I think it, you know, it's kind of taken for granted a little bit sometimes. When I didn't work in the industry, I was just like, oh, everybody must really enjoy it when you work on games because it's video yeah. games. Like, I, I thought that when I did work in the industry, you kind of assume that because it's such a, it's a hobby turned yeah. into a job. But to, to be able to, but it's not, it's, it's really stressful, it's difficult, there are deadlines to hit, it's, it's all, it's so, so difficult to create these awesome things and so to be able to work in an environment that does feel like that and does feel enjoyable and you do look forward to tomorrow is really really important and i learned that more and more the more that i work in the industry so yeah you always, you always get that thing so we say what do you do so i'll make video games like oh you just sit around <laughs> playing games all day do you it's like no no, no not quite. <laughs> quite. yeah absolutely yeah i think um like yeah i, I 
we've talked a bit about it, kind of the values and stuff like that, but maybe, I don't know if there's any kind of examples we could pick out of like what makes our team specifically great. I don't know if like, I might come to you first, Pete. Like some examples you can give of like the way that we work or the things that we do or things that you enjoy the most about like what makes the Sumo Leamington team specifically like such a great place to be. And great place well, to I think Chris touched on a little bit about how, I mean, I, I think I might have been the last employee hired Free in lockdown. real life. It wasn't, ah. it wasn't me. Anyway, as, we, as we all went home from there, it was really interesting just seeing how you know the team grew and those relationships grew because you know there were some people even then obviously you know working with us from different parts of the world anyway. Mm. But I think it just meant that we just worked that bit harder at communication. But I think the really important bit was when we brought people into the studio, we really explained that, you know, in the hiring process, this is what we do. Does this sound like it's what you would like mm -hmm. to do as well? But I think the things that really sort of struck a chord with me was certainly with this project as well, over two years ago, when we're starting as we we're a very, very small group. And it was just that celebration of each other's work everyone was just loving seeing what we're all doing and that level of excitement and communication right from the start was really really good and i think that's where those strong bonds really happened and true you could see it if you you know when you look back in our old playtest videos that we used to record as we <laughs> played the game weekly just the sense of joy and just how much fun we had you know when the game didn't work properly not because it, we haven't done it right it's because we literally haven't made the game <laughs> <laughs> so, so we had to talk around it oh don't do that yeah like that's every, true like everyone sit on the start line and don't start <laughs> yeah that's some hilarious moments but i yeah. think it's those shared experiences i think that helped you know build yeah. a stronger team and that good relationships that we've all got definitely i think um that the a good example of that for me is when we announced the game so we, we announced it like earlier this year and the the genuine excitement from the entire team was just like our game's going to be shown to people and it's going to be out there in the world and that genuine like real excitement for that is something that I haven't really experienced at other studios it's, it almost feels like oh we made it <laughs> we got to this point it's something amazing and there's always a bit of a sense of that but there was a real across the team it was we've done it well done this is awesome and this is the start of the next part of a really cool adventure so like and you know yeah. I've done something I see at Sumo in general and, and you know right, right up to the founders they're genuinely so excited about each you know each project that Sumo's working on and to to see them sort of hit, hit the light, the light of the day, yeah. and um, almost child childlike excitement, and I think that sort of filters, you know, through the business really, and it, it comes back to, you know, Sumo's got a lot of studios now, but it's always sort of chosen to work with people and individuals who kind of share share that um, sort of remaining delight about video games, which you know I, th I think is super important. Um, yeah. you know, having been around a long time, you know, it does hit stages where people get a little bit tired of, um, you know, the the industry and working industry, and we just don't see that um, with Sumo. So I think that's really nice. Yeah. Also, excitement is contagious. So yeah. if one person, you see one person that's really enjoying, you know, the game and doing what they what we are doing, like uh, enjoying the, the work. It's, it's contagious. So yeah. at some point, this excitement would come back to you from other people. So yeah. that's true. Yeah, I felt that absolutely. I've only been here since January, but I could feel that ever since I joined. So yeah, <coughs> absolutely. That's very true. On when we do playtests, Lucia, your excitement. Is <laughs> excited. <laughs> excited about playing the game. Yeah. So to, to peel back the curtain a bit, at least I mean many more times this, but at least once a week we will do like a studio-wide play test like you know we'll do a lot more of that to test things and look at specific things but at least once a week we'll do we'll do like a play test and we'll, we'll go over and check certain things and yeah there's 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 a there's a good selection of people that if they leave their mic on it's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah you maybe put yourself in that category potentially <laughs> I'm a, I'm, i only make sure i mute myself just make sure i'm not part of that category but yeah you're right it's contagious it's fantastic i gotta say those play tests are my favorite time of the week I'm always, i can't always make them and i'm gutted but yeah. i can't because it's, it's you know, such a nice nice time every week if you miss them you'll you, you'll see the chat Coming through and is oh I can't believe this happened or GG and is yeah, oh I missed it. Big <laughs> stream. <yes>. Yeah. <laughs> it always generates a, a little video. Or yes. A gift of something. <laughs> something will happen. <laughs> I've got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be rolling out absolutely. All right, we've we've kind of we've danced around it a bit. We haven't really properly talked about it, so let's talk about our game Stampede Racing Royale. So this was something I was really interested in when I first joined. Like so I. When I first joined the team, like, I was chatting to like some of yourselves here and some other people, and they were kind of walking me through the game and sh showing me some first visuals. I was like, 
I'd play that. <laughs> that was a big thing for me. Is like, I'd enjoy the hell out of that game, which was a, which was a big thing for me. But and immediately I, the question for me when I was like looking at it, and it's like I still have a little bit of this question now, is where where did this idea stem from? Like what where where was the seed planted? I guess maybe Chris or Boyce so I might like to talk about where the kind of the the vision uh, yeah. came from. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. But you know, again, it's sort of a I suppose a, a lockdown based story. Um, but it goes back to sort of the heritage of the studio almost. You know, I used to work at um, Sega before I was working at Sumo. Um, and one of my jobs at, at Sega was to come and work on a game called um, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, mm. which is a mouthful. Um, and Sumo was building that game. So I, I came to work at Sumo in Sheffield a little bit to help, help the guys working on that game. You know, I've got a lot of history of doing various racing games in the past. So there was kind of a shared heritage there even before I arrived at Sumo of working on the karting games. Um, you know, Sumo primarily is a company, certainly historically, um, does a lot of work, work for hire. It, you know, collaborates with other studios to make games as well as doing sort of end-to-end -end development like the Sonic Racing game. Um, and having started Sumo Leamington, um, we were working on various things, but really there was, there was a wish from the founders always was to do something original. Um, and you know my background, same as same as Paul and I think Pete as well, is making a lot of original games. And literally, we had a brief window in lockdown when some of us could get together. And I was sitting with Paul um, over lunch, and it, it was literally a conversation of, okay, so what what we're going to do then? What we're going to do is an original game, and um, something involving vehicles made a lot of sense. Um, one of the guys in Sheffield, one of the, the creative directors in Sheffield got an idea as well to maybe do something um, a little bit novel with with karting our specialization in Leamington really was big big server based games games which have communities of people in there um, and you know the, the idea and people talk about it now it's kind of an obvious idea really but you know a, a, a battle royale karting game mm. given the, the heritage of the people in the studio and sumo um, just kind of made sense and um, yeah we, we carried on from there yeah I suppose it would be yeah, interesting for Paul's view because he had a similar experience to you. He came to speak to us and one of the things, you know, he was obviously looking at is what we were doing and he saw the early stages of... Very, of very early. I remember, yeah. I remember going down to the studio the first time and it was like a blocked out track with cubes. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, play this. And I was really rubbish at it. And they were like, what's wrong with you? I thought you, were, you played better than you. Uh, racing games. Uh, yeah, I must, uh, I must have personally... I am. Super happy to be working on Stampede because my favourite genre of video games are racing games. I've made, like Chris, I've made a lot of uh, original IP racing games as well as licensed uh, racing games. Paul, uh, Paul and I used to be rivals, although we didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. True. We, can, we, can, we can touch on that. <laughs> that bitter rivalry. We'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. Um, and uh, my favourite genre of racing games are karting games. Yeah. And so to actually find out, you know, that that was what I was going to be working on. But we had this novel twist, uh, 60 plays online. And yeah, every, every time, I mean, I was, I was lucky enough to be in LA to do the announcement press tour. And when I um, was explaining what the game is and showing the game to journalists who are inherently very hard to impress because they see a lot of games and a lot of games in development. Uh, and the, the, the sort of thing was like, like, this is so simple. Why hasn't somebody done this before? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes those simple ideas are, are overlooked because you try to be a bit too clever. Mm -hmm. You know, be too bit cleverer and sort of be, you know, trying to take something that's uh, never been done before. This obviously is a new subgenre, mm -hmm. um, but we are creating something that's unique. It's new, it's full of energy, it's full of life, and it's got a lot of appeal. Really, really, it's exciting to be on it. So I, I guess what I haven't, I haven't asked yet is what you've probably done two million times already, which is like the elevator pitch for, for the game. Like it's, yeah, so if somebody's joining, <coughs> like, what's this game? You're talking about it. I don't really know about it. Uh, so. yeah, so I, got, I got that. I got that. Down to well, a well, well, after a tea after doing 36 <laughs> interviews in two days. Um, so basically, um, the easiest way to describe Stampede Racing Royale is Fall Guys meets Mario Kart. Yeah. So 60 players online. You've got all the uh, classic tropes of a karting game. You've got power-ups and pickups and weapons to use and things in the environment that are trying to attack you but also aid you like boost pads your cool jumps and then you have this elimination uh, we have in, in the game three round elimination so if you don't get through to the first uh, through the first round you're eliminated you start again but if you progress through the three rounds and break down to so get down to the top 
20 in the end and you can be crowned champion and you acquire loads of cool stuff that goes with that. So that sort of uh, competitiveness, but also sense of jeopardy that you have with each round that will I make it through, will yeah. I not? Then that's, you know, that emphasizes the excitement of the game on top of the core racing gaming experience, which is really joyous. Yeah. Sorry, I made you go through that whole media. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I've some not, repressed I've memories. Not got PTSD yet. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe after Gamescom. Yeah, right. Uh, that'll be all yeah, right. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. That's one thing I was thinking. You, you sort of talking through that there. It is kind of it's quite an easy idea, and yep. you know, yeah, you get it straight away. Technically, actually having that many players in a yeah. closed space and moving quite fast and having collisions, yeah. it's, it's you know, it's not it's not yeah. an easy thing te technically. The concept so. is. Oh yeah, I, that, well, that we can have it for then simple. making it actually happen is yeah. is, so, is, uh, is an know, effort. I've got to say, even at an early stage, you know, we've got a great set of people working on the server code and the client code. Um, it's just been really impressive to mm. see, you know, how how that's come together yeah. really well. Because um, you know, we, we sometimes maybe forget actually how how long it's been working well in in terms of just the core game. It's been much fun. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's kind of tough to, to get that kind of thing working. So yeah. it's a testament to the team. Really. Definitely. I think, yeah, we, we've seen that in the media stuff has come through and we've done our play tests and, and like, you know, a majority of the feedback has been like the concept is like, you know, why hasn't someone done like this, something like this before? And they just love like the core cool concept of it. But on top of that is the art and the visuals and how it looks and, you know, that how it how it comes across especially from an art perspective has been even at this very early stage people have been super impressed by that and you know one of the cameras is probably picking up our, our art over there you know it's, it's bright it's colorful it's wild and wonderful we have two people here representing art that we can talk to you about this so like, it'll be great to kind of um talk to you maybe start with you Pete, about that kind of maybe some initial inspirations or concepts for that art style for a game like this like from, from your point of view like were there any kind of early inspirations for how you wanted this game to look yeah, I mean it was it was an interesting one because it was one of those things where we started it sort of very quickly, you know, from sort of switching from doing one project to another and go, right, okay, within this month, roughly work out what you're gonna do and how it's gonna work and and so there's a lot of thinking around it and overthinking, but then sometimes, you know, obviously given the the situation we're in, because it was we're still in a form of lockdown and people weren't really going around much, and I was like watching a lot of travel programs and I was thinking, well, oh, look at all this really cool, colourful stuff that's in the world. <laughs> yeah. And then that sort of filtered in. And I had ideas as well, you know, to how we could bring in things like sort of urban culture and street art and that kind of expression and personalisation, because personalisation was always going to be a big part yeah. of a game like this that's community focused. So I think those things gradually sort of built up and sort of, and slowly slotted together that you know to form something that you know like made more of a coherent world mm. yeah i always like the discussion that you know a world festival kind of thing as you said yeah. i do remember you sort of saying that you've been sort of drooling over all of these locations around the world that you, you couldn't even leave your house yeah yeah it was just realizing you know how much you know beautiful, colourful places there are in the world, but also why they are like that. You know, a lot of it was things like, it was a combination of street art or urban regeneration and things. I thought, well, people need a bit of joy mm -hmm. in their lives. And this game needs to give people that sort of delight and happiness, but it also, it needs to be for everyone. And then right over those first few weeks, it was right, okay, this is quite a lot on your own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to break right. all these things out. And I thought, brilliant, I know someone who's really like, <laughs> Upbeat and happy, joy. <laughs> he does amazing artwork. Lucia, <laughs> then like serial killer, like, not serious. <laughs> <laughs> if I know that, but anyway, then I think we had a lot of those. Early That's stuff. why you're finding that out now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, then, and then slowly we started to build, you know, these things up together, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was a. Uh, at the beginning, I think the main inspiration was South America. And uh, I, I remember just, you know, going on Google and, you know, searching for all the pictures. I was like, oh, damn, I wish I was there <laughs> and during, during lockdown, you know. <laughs> um, so it was it was a really, really cool research to make at the beginning, finding those places that are like kind of underground, but also colorful and uh, without, you know, different, you know, palm trees and also toucans and also... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. um, so, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was interesting also seeing how through time that style developed because at the beginning it was, I think it was 
maybe a bit too niche because we were saying okay south america vibe maybe it was a bit too much yeah that way okay <laughs> so i think through time we managed a way to develop it in a more uh urban uh okay. way and to make it more i don't know um i don't know how to say it but um wider yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. cool yeah i suppose a bit that we worked out is what to take out of that early stuff that yeah you could spread around the game to give it an overall identity and then mm. from that it's like you can take this game anywhere and a lot of that kind of art culture stuff that we developed will just be the thread that ties everything together yeah i think it, we'll, we'll touch on it a bit in terms of like player feedback in a moment but like what's been really cool is like we've only in terms of stuff that we've shown like on the channels and even like when we've done playtest so far we've shown like a slice of what of what this game is going to be mm -hmm. and even then a lot of the feedback we get is i love the variety in like the maps and the art style like and we've shown like that that's super important because I, I, and it's a carting game we're coming out well, there are some very good and you know, competitors yeah. uh, in in the in that genre um, that we uh, we have a style that sets us apart, and that that is quite, you know really important. In uh, it's a very strong style; it's very recognisable, um, and but it's also something that's going to grow mm. um, as we you know it's a games as a service. This is going to be running for we hope many years, and that progression of the content that goes into the game and the personality of the game as we get feedback from the community we'll just keep evolving and growing so that yeah. you know that exciting future that we haven't got to yet mm. is is uh, is quite um, tantalizing yeah definitely so you touched on it a little bit before we kind of we move on to the kind of like what, what you know the plans for the future and things like that but the like the racing heritage in this team whether it's kart racing or it's like the racing genre in general. It's like we're so we're here in Leamington Spa. It's known as a, a hub for UK gaming and particularly racing games. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it from myself working at different racing studios and lots of ones nearby and just over the road. It's it's a hub for that kind of genre. Um, and within our team and within this room, we have you know so much experience when it comes to the world of racing games, which is such a a resource. I don't know if, if it, I guess either of you can maybe speak to that a little bit more because obviously yourselves, you've got loads of experience in this genre, but I know that we've got, you know, handling designers and level designers and, and like all the, you know, so many different disciplines that, you know, have so much experience that goes, yeah, that's how you make something fun or that's how you make something enjoyable in a racing game, which is such a huge resource. Yeah, I think it spans wider than, you know, just traditional sort of console games mm -hmm. going back to sort of the, our, you know, our competition from <laughs> former years, even though I didn't realise it, you know, I was doing the Colin McRae series, Paul was working on WRC, so, mm -hmm. you know, they were sort of, as the PlayStation era happened, those two games were fairly big on, yeah. on, the, on the PlayStation as well as other consoles uh, in Colin McRae's case. But we've got people who worked on um, you know mobile racing games um, as well as a lot of car karting games across different sort of subgenres. Uh, obviously, pretty much everybody who is working in development in Leamington has touched Codemasters at some point. And right. That's, that's obviously where I started my career. Um, but you know the, the mobile racing games and even sort of the, the mobile casual games that some of us have worked on. You know the player versus player. Um, Sonic games that I worked on when I was still at Sega. Um, Phil, who's our technical director, has worked on a lot of mm. casual games as well as um, starting on on the Toka series at, at Codemasters. And I think, um, as you touched on it, you know, some some of our handling designers have come from um, Sumo's Nottingham Studio, and they worked on Team Sonic Racing as well as some of the former Sonic Racing games. Mm. Um, so there's sort of a nice blend of um, you know deep racing experience and. Having genre expertise is important. Yes, you know you learn things over the years, um, but also having sort of that balance of mobile games as well as console games, I think, is important as well. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm still dining out on a game that I made 15 <laughs> years ago. Um, <laughs> so I, I let you mention. Yeah, yeah. yeah which um, which uh, you know uh, 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 was was classed as a uh, sort of generational defining yeah. game, which really because the consoles have gone so powerful from PlayStation Two to PlayStation yes. Three. We went to HD yeah. graphics, yeah, which meant four times as many pixels, four times as much work. Um, but yeah, Motorstorm was like an, uh, an amazing experience. Most of Pacific Rift, I was creative director on both. Previous to that, as Chris said, uh, uh, WRC games, it was really interesting because every year we would 
launch uh, WRC 1, WRC 2, <laughs> yeah. WRC, and then just slightly out of step, uh, Colin McRae would drop, Colin McRae 2, <laughs> Colin McRae, and I'd be like, oh, we'd be like, oh, what have they done now? <laughs> oh, right, okay, we, we, need to, we need to borrow that, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll borrow that thing, and then, and then unknown to me, Chris and um, the team over there were doing the same with us, <laughs> we're looking, oh, what, what have Evolution done now? Okay, we need to do that. Um, so, yeah, it's... Um, it's you know it there's, there's there is a lot of history and a lot of development, but that is not the the reason why this game is so good. The, yeah. the game this game is so good because we married that experience and that knowledge with the the sort of passion and the input and the skills of the rest of the team. So people that are maybe not as uh, as um, old. Old, I'm trying to think. Dodging around. Do you know what? I I hate them all with their youth. Um, Yeah, so people are less uh, involved in racing games, but that's the thing. You bring something different to a different uh, perspective on the genre, a different view of it, a different way of playing and even thinking about the game. That's true. Um, And that is super important, and we can then sort of blend all that together on the team. And as you can see, the the, the proof of that is is what we've made and what we're bringing to the world now. There'll be quite a few people, it's their first original title. And, um, you know, like I talked about, there's a big span of experience in in the team, which is really just a positive, I think. And, you know, with, with experience, you know, comes a certain a certain way of looking at things and having a lot of people who, uh, you know, it's kind of their, their first time they've worked on this kind of game, I think is really important as well. And we always set out to, you know, we didn't want to make something that was a hardcore racing game. We wanted to make something that was, you know, a fun multiplayer yeah. game first. It just happens that it's underpinned by the fact it's got vehicles in it and that's kind of the core mechanic. But, you know, I think um, having that experience there, but really focusing on just a fun multiplayer experience. Um, yeah, you know, has has sent us in a really nice direction. I think that's that's what def- but both of you said a testament kind of to the team is something that I didn't really think about until now is that we because I had that question about like your racing heritage and different experience from that, different games, different studios, and we have that. But when I play, when I see the fee- and when I see the feed when I play the game and when I see the feedback from other players, they don't say oh it plays like X. But like they don't say it plays like all of the games that our team have worked on because they've taken the good stuff that they've done at these projects and these mm-hmm. learnings and this experience and created something new and something different, which is fantastic. Like it's just such a cool skill to have to be able to do that. Um, before I'm, I'm going to tell a quick story before I move on, um, and yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I've like, I'm I'm a huge racing game player. I'm the same as you. That like, racing games is, is my genre. I've played racing games all my life, and especially like car racing games and accessible games. Colin McRae Rally was was like. I there are a handful of games I've played more in my life than Colin McRae Rally, and um, I knew that you, that Chris, you'd worked on you worked at Codemasters, but I didn't yeah. know exactly why. And we were we were in Liverpool a few weeks ago, and we were just after a, a get together. We were just chatting away, just the two of us, and then I was just and we talked a little bit more about your history, and yeah. you mentioned you working on Colin McRae Rally, and I was like, oh, just, I don't really get like Starstruck, and I'm not, I'm not like, oh, well, you worked on that game. Yeah. I'm kind of over that now, just yeah. about, <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Um, I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's amazing that you worked on Comic Rally and we chatted, chatted about it a little bit. And I went specific. I went fanboy. I went specific. And I was like, I can't tell you how much time I spent just playing on the driving school. So the start of Colin McRae Rally, so some people, a lot of people won't understand this, but some people do. Just that bit at the start where you're just driving around like a field, driving around like a, almost like a car park. And you're like, yeah, I, I did that. <laughs> I made yeah, that, that basically that, with that a friend. Was, that was my bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so much of my yeah. time like, spent just that specific thing and you, you made that. Well, I think that's really nice as well. Because you know, even me coming into the industry, there was games I played as a kid, and I, I won't sort of go down the annals of history too much. But I've then, subsequently, in you know my previous roles, I've kind of sat down in rooms with the people who created these games I was playing as a kid, and I think it's just brilliant to, to have that experience. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So, mo- moving a bit further forward, then kind of you know that's the game, that's the concept, that's the history and the the, the skill and talent behind it. We're making it, we're developing it, and we're still in early stages, but we've been doing things like Steam playtests, and we've been beginning to kind of begin that process of allowing our growing community to kind of check out the game and start giving some feedback. There'll be some people who aren't kind of used to that kind of process. They're more used to just, you hear a game gets announced, it comes out, you enjoy it, and, then, and there's some stuff after it, and then, you know there's some service for it maybe. But we're doing, taking a slightly different approach, a bit and a more and more popular approach, I think, which is, slowly kind of as take basically take a community along as part of development right and mm-hmm. and you know bring bring them along on that journey but a lot of people will wonder why why are we allowing people to 
have eyes and have the ability to play the game so early. I guess I might start off with you, Paul. Like, what is the what is the value in doing things like Steam play tests like we are now? Um, it's, it's to learn. Yeah, it really is to learn. Um, through best intentions and experience and everything that we know and the, the talent of the team and the skills of the team, we can make a product, but it just may not resonate. You know, it may not quite hit the tone. Whereas what we have here is a wonderful way to sort of test things and get sentiment of people playing the game, find out what's working really well, do more of that. If something isn't working well, can we change it or improve it or do we take it out of the game? Um, I my, my history was working on box products where basically yeah. you stopped working on the game and at the end of every project it would be pull the game out of my cold dead hands because I was like I need it isn't ready yet it isn't finished and then it, you couldn't do anything about it that was it it was done um, obviously with day one patches downloadable content that came in through uh, console generations a bit further that sort of took that anxiety away <laughs> a little bit um, but it was still this sort of thing. It was almost like you, you do it as best as you can you, and it may not be a success. Luckily, I've, I've worked on successful games. So for me, I, this is almost like a more comfortable environment as a developer. So, you know, being able to know that we can affect change and we have agencies, we carry on this journey through development. And yeah, the voice of the community is basically, we're making this game for the players. We're not making it for ourselves. And we want to make sure that they're enjoying it not just when they first play it, but when they come back and play it, you know, how many months later. We want people to keep enjoying the game as much as possible for as long as possible. Yeah. And that means it has to grow and evolve. Yeah. And we're it's and it's in an early stage at the moment. Okay. Sometimes the assumption is, oh, it, it's playable, therefore, you know, it's really a long, far long development. So, so there's so long to go in terms of, you know, what we haven't finished yet, what we want to add, what we want to improve. So, yeah, we're still in very early stages. But... Any, anybody else here that, you know, we've started doing that kind of playtest process of so people beginning to get their hands on a, on a slice of the game. Is there anything that's, like, surprised you that you've seen so far when you've seen folks play it or sent some feedback of you thought, oh, I didn't think they'd spot that or I didn't think they'd play it that way or I didn't think that that would be a highlight for them. I don't know if any, anybody's got a, something that they've seen yet. <laughs> I suppose from my point of view, going, going back to, you know, why, why are we doing this? As Paul said, you know, originally you'd make a game and you put it out there, and you know um, that'd be it. Mm. And it was always interesting if you're working on a sequel to sort of try and improve the game um, and try and figure out, you know, what people were enjoying about the game or not. But you were still guessing back in those days, and it's, you know, a lot. A lot of us have got a lot of mobile experience as well um, in in the studio uh, right now, and actually the opportunity to have a game running and be able to see what people are enjoying and sort of move towards that more. And it's not. It's not to say we're not kind of owning the design of the game but we want to kind of have the, the game working with the community um to your question about you know what surprises um you know we've, we've got some automated drivers in the game that uh, or bots as we we call them um we thought they were pretty good they're not good at all with some, <laughs> some, 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 you know, we have people in the, in the team who've been playing the game pretty much for you know a yeah. year in its current form and then suddenly, you know, you start doing some focused testing, or you, you put it out in a, in a be an open beta, as we yeah. have recently, um, and kind of uh, you see that the, the the best best of us are nowhere near as good as, <laughs> as the public playing yeah. very quickly. And um, you know, I think that it's it's useful to be able to see that and make because we want the game to be you know great for new players who aren't maybe that competent at playing racing games, but we need it really to work well for people who are competent at um, you know karting games and um, setting up the game such that it's rewarding for both you know both ends of that spectrum yeah it's something that's really hard to do unless you can actually see how people are playing the game and seeing what they break and see see what assumptions um, we have made that aren't quite right so yeah. I think it's it's really cool to be able to just put the game out there like you say it's quite a small kernel of what the game will become but then you know all being well grow that with with people playing the game over time it's 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 just a nice way to to work things i think yeah we've um so because it's such a <clears throat> small slice of the moment we, we've but we've still like i said earlier we've got some good feedback when it comes to like variety in terms of the art and what we've been able to show so far but from yourselves lichia or pete is there anything that you don't have to go into specifics. I don't want to give anything. Don't want to give too much away. <laughs> but are you? Is there anything that it comes to like maps or you know the the customization items or anything else sort of surrounding that, that you're really excited that 
oh, we haven't been able to show that off yet, but we've been working on this. Um, or is it just more of more of what you're doing? Is there anything in particular you're like, can't wait to get get some get some eyes on this? And uh, yeah. I think a lot of it is so you know we've shown people maps in development. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. even like this morning, I'm you know looking at things that have got you know have moved on a little bit further mm -hmm. and knowing that they're progressing even more. And then there's the ones you know that I played today with designers and going, oh, it's going to be really good. We've just got high level concept art for what this will be like. So th there's a next level of excitement with that. But in terms of say the customization stuff, it's particularly around characters and the cosmetics. So this, you know, the bit with carts as well, where players can really express themselves. Yeah. And you just keep thinking, oh, you guys haven't seen half of this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's loads of it to come. And, and to the point where, well, I'll say this embarrassingly on the record though, that you know, I rely on our content producer to say, did you, do you know what happened to that? Did that one go in the game? Like, <laughs> yeah. There is so much work being done. Yeah. It's, it's really exciting to see. Yeah. And I think the, a bit about the play test that I thought was really fun was even that limited amount of stuff yeah. was seeing how people were choosing to express and represent themselves in the game. And it's like, well, I wouldn't have put that with that, but it worked. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Very true. What about you, uh, I think for me, um, something that I'm really looking forward to seeing like in game and people playing it is like like to use the new faces of the yeah. characters because I can't say probably <laughs> <laughs> but, but but yeah I'm really looking forward to have the new the new faces the characters uh, faces yeah. in game so like even in you know what we've shown so far is, has gone down pretty well especially in terms of like the visual side of things but it's just going to keep getting better and, and we're going to diversify even more which is like a testament to what you folks are doing. I, the thing that surprised me I think from the feedback we've had on the first play test is the way that the people that play the game have you know accepted the you know the stage of development that yeah. we're in you know like like Pete said we we want we put some tracks out that we've designed that play well but we've not arted up yet so they're like almost untested. But people sort of accepted that, and they, you know they they almost sort of like um, not grateful, but they appreciate being brought into this development yep. process. So they can also then see, hopefully, when we do the next play test, then play test or on launches after that, how what was quite embryonic at the beginning has, has matured and developed into something that's uh, quite wonderful. Um, I think uh, one last point that, that I've noticed is when I've done hands on demo. And this has been with either journalists or, or VIPs that we've shown um, around the, our sort of parent company that you almost have to pull the control out the hand. <laughs> yes. and like, your time yes. is up now. Yes. Um, you need to move on to the next interview or your next meeting. And they're like, just one more game. And that's sort of just one more game. Yeah. That you can't almost, uh, like this, uh, you know, you can do your best to design that, yeah. to, to create it and cultivate it. But it, that really is magic, and you can you can spend years and years working on a game where you're trying to find the fun, yeah, and you never do. You know, you got it, it looks great, it's got an interesting story yeah. or game mechanic, but oh, what's the fun with Stampede Racing Royale? Buckets of fun, yeah. right out the door, mm -hmm. um, and we're just doing our best not to destroy that. It's going pretty well. <laughs> pretty, pretty well so far. That point that you mentioned about that kind of understanding of the process and what what level we are at in terms of development, I can't stress that enough. If there's anybody watching this that is you know connected to like our socials and reads the stuff that we put on Steam and the way that we chat with players, you're probably getting sick of me already saying thank you because like I genuinely and this isn't a marketing speak, I'm blown away by the amount of a constructive feedback that we've got since we did the first play test of, of like oh yeah this didn't really like constructive feedback is an example is like yeah i didn't really like this it didn't really work but i totally understand you know that this is where the where the game is and i maybe suggest doing this moving forward like that is just gold dust to, to us as a team um so to have that level of feedback so consistently already from our community has just been stunning and it's it's been a pleasure to be able to kind of go through that process so yeah completely agree like that's been a fantastic side of things we're, we're, we're moving towards the end here. I promise, I said to you guys we'll go for about 40 minutes. We've already done 50. Yeah. So, wow. okay. <laughs> we've been too busy chatting away. So, um, But let's let's look even further ahead. So we're allowed to talk about it. This is a safe space. Um, <laughs> er, early access. Okay. Early access. <laughs> but when, when, we, when we show this to the world, we'll be able to talk about it. Early access, November the 2nd. Yeah. 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 Big, yeah. Mile, big milestone, um, a huge kind of step forward as we talk about that journey with players. Um, firstly, like just on a general level, how exciting is it to be able to reach that significant stage where we can say, yeah, okay, this is where we're going to go to early access and kind of take the game to the to the next stage, really? 
<laughs> I guess that opens everybody. Yeah. Yes, I'm very excited. Yes, yeah. that's quite a close question. I'm looking at the chair. Uh, okay, well, I, I was already super excited when right. the game it came out, like for the playtest, because for how many years? Like two, around two years, we've yeah. been working on the game, mm. and we haven't been able to speak about that. <laughs> yeah. So people would ask me, "Oh, what are you working on?" And I would be, "Oh." A game. <laughs> um, so already, like at this stage, like it's super exciting. Uh, seeing the game out there, like on the next level, it's like, oh my god! Like I, I made some of that stuff, <laughs> and, and you can see that that's all cool. of that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm super, super excited for it. And I think the key, the key reason is that. It's going to be a big step forward in terms of what we can what we can let players experience. It's going to be kind of mm -hmm. you know people people seem to enjoy what we put out so far, but that you know we'll be able to add to that with features and ways to play and more cosmetics, potentially more maps, like all, all these kind of things that we're working on. So yeah, I, I've, I've maybe given the game away a little bit there, but I don't know if anybody can kind of give maybe a bit more insight into some of the some of the things you're most excited to kind of share once we get to that stage of uh, early access I have, to, I have to be careful about you know because there's all sorts of things that <laughs> yeah. we're thinking about coming into the game from early access and beyond yeah and the, the point is you know early access it's kind of in equal measures scary but exciting yeah but i kind of like i'm excited by the scariness too um but it is an early access you know it's there's a lot more that we that we are building around the game and we'll keep coming in as, as the game progresses past early access we just wanted to use that as an opportunity to really, you know, start working with the growing community, um, and you know, it's exciting just to see how pe people experience the yeah. game. But then, you know, the, the game is intended to be a fun multiplayer experience. There's all sorts of social features, you know, um, other things that you could probably guess at coming down down the road um, in, in terms of um, more features in the game. Um, think things that will kind of connect people to the game more and, and enab enable people to enjoy playing with kind of new and old friends within the game and actually starting to see that stuff and yeah. you know go back to sort of our vision as a studio we make you look forward to tomorrow you know we, we firmly believe in this game and it's just exciting you know to, to get to the point where we're seeing people um, you know, the play tests are great but we you know they're very brief open beaters to actually see the game running and um, you know, pe people coming back day after day is, yeah. is super exciting. It's the scale. So early access, right. early access for us is really lots of people playing the game. Yeah. And because the game relies, not relies, but that it's, it's designed and it's set up for 60 players to join into one race. <coughs> Excuse me. 60 players to join into one race, which is a unique uh, USP that we have in the game. The playtests are super important. Um, and when we did the first playtest, I, I said to the team, we've launched. Yeah. You know, philosophically and emotionally, yeah. we because real people, that's like the chief was saying, real people actually downloaded the game yeah. on their own in their houses or yeah. in their bedrooms, played the game on their own, and that means we launched. And although, albeit it was for a short period of time, when we go into early access on the second of November, um, there's no going back. You know, we, we've we started, and at that point, you know, we will be ramping up with our community um activities will be ramped up with our marketing activities more and more people will see the game yeah. be aware of the game and hopefully then join in with everybody else playing the game uh, and that is what we're planning to then build upon and grow as we move into next year definitely i think from 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 my side to weirdly answer my own question um <laughs> like the so like we, yeah we, we've talked in like uh, in, in like some of the early content that we put out for the game, we talked about things like seasons and challenges and events and stuff like that. So obviously, in the in the play test that we've done so far, it's sixty player racing, go in a lobby, enjoy, and, and you know that, that core, that absolute core of the game, and, and folks have um, have enjoyed that. But to have the ability to kind of tack on, like build onto that with extra things like special events or you know, seasons of content and themes and, and little just things like that that keep people coming back and have new things to strive for mm. new things to achieve new things to earn and bragging rights and all, all these kind of things like, that's the stuff that i'm looking forward to the most to give people even more reasons to go back in and just, oh, i'll have another go so i can unlock this thing or i can take part in this event and stuff like that, that that's going to be really cool and like you mentioned the community stuff yeah from my side like getting things like discord live and we're gonna have some fun there and doing more things around streaming is going to be awesome so 
yeah, we, we're going to be kicking all of those kind of things off once we start building towards early access. So yeah, really excited for all of that. So yeah, it's it's exciting times. We've already it feels like we've already achieved so so much, but we're still very early in that journey because you know early again, it kind of similar to what you were saying about the first playtest. I imagine that early access will feel like a launch, but it's, we're still on that journey. You know, we're still kind of continuing that process. So it's going to be cool to kind of see that come to fruition. Right. I'll wrap up because I've kept you guys for too long already. Um, so in a word, if you could choose one word to describe Stampede Racing Royale, I'll start with you, Pete. You get, so you did, so now he's going to steal one from you. So yeah. you get the first choice. Oh, no. So in a way, if you could describe Stampede Racing Royale. Uh, joyous. Yeah. <laughs> Chris. Eclectic. Ah, yeah, okay. You chill? Oh, with attitude. Attitude, oh, yes. yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Mayhem. <laughs> oh, yeah. the, the game, not development. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, mayhem. Because, yeah, it is. I, I, I often go chaotic. Yeah, yeah, like a term that I tend to use when I'm talking about is like conquer the chaos. Like, I feel like, it, yeah, it's it's chaos, but in a very good way. Like, it's, it's just this kind of fun and enjoyable sense of, of chaos that's going on around you. So it's like 60 drivers, but in, but in such a way that it's fun and there's tactics involved and, and skill involved, but above all just chaotic fun so yeah mm. cool i think that's a stick that on a billboard somewhere just all, all five of those words and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you everybody for joining me really really appreciate it i hope i haven't scared you off <laughs> this is the you know first episode no, no not even with those shots not even with yeah. the shots yeah. yeah it's the first warm day we've had in about three weeks so yeah. i make yeah. make making the most of it you have to put up with these legs yeah um yeah it's been fantastic. First episode of the Stampy Podcast. We, we're, we're hoping we're going to do more and more of these as, as development goes on so we can continue to give you a bit of insight into you know how the game is um, coming along in terms of development and some previews, in, previews into what we're working on and to show you more of the awesome team that work here at Sumo Lamington. So thank you for everybody who's watched. Thank you everybody here for being thank part you. of this. Thank I'll you. let you step outside a minute because it is so warm in this <laughs> studio um, and I had to turn the air con off because it was you just... Said, uh, uh, behind everybody so yeah thank you for putting up with that but yeah thanks everybody enjoy uh whatever you decide to scroll next to on youtube or spotify uh, <laughs> and yeah we'll hopefully see you again for the next episode of the stampede podcast see you later see you bye bye, bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. <laughs>